token. We're not going to um, sing so soft, you know, sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing it, you know. We're obviously not going to do that, you know. You want to sing, you know, sing the wondrous love of Jesus. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to make a show. You know what I'm saying? Like, sing the wondrous, and, you know, love of, you know, and go all to these notes and make your voice loud. It's just a soft, clear intonation, and you're at the same time with power. Isn't God a balanced God? When you think about it, you look at the lion, and yet you see the birds, there's a balance somewhere in between. God is not a boring God. So we're not going to come here and just sing hymns, amen? There's scripture songs, there's chorale songs, there's instrumental music. God has his music out there, guys. We don't have to say, oh, you know, I'm never going to be able to listen to Kirk Franklin ever again, you know? That's your decision, amen? But there are substitutes, just like there is for cheese, okay? You guys understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Amen. Well, you guys got you guys got it. Amen. Okay, perfect. Okay, ready to move on here. Now that we know what music is to be like, was that clear to everyone how music should be? Does anyone have any questions in regards to what we have seen so far? Because we are about to go into some serious stuff right here. Does anyone have any questions in regards to what music should be like? No questions? Oh, perfect. We're going to go through the gospel music that we have today. Amen? Okay. And the last thing, guys, I want you to listen very, very closely. Mrs. White encouraged the tasteful use of musical instruments. However, she was empathetic that it is better never to have worship of God blended with music than to use musical instruments to create a bedlam of noise that shocks the senses and perverts the worship. Let me read the quote to you. The Holy Spirit never reveals himself in such methods, in such a bedlam of noise. Was that clear to everyone? Okay. One moment, please. That was from... Selected Messages, Book 2, page 36. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 36. She says, she doesn't say every once in a while the Holy Spirit shows up when there's a bed lamb of noise. She said what? The Holy Spirit what? Never, never reveals itself. Let me ask you guys a question. Have you guys felt the Holy Spirit in many of these uh, worship services? where the music is so loud you can't even speak to the other person? Have you guys felt the Holy Spirit there? Or is it just an emotional thing? Because you know what? The enemy is an expert at using the emotions to make us feel like we are having some sort of experience. Why do you guys think that they have in, in these voodoo rituals, in a lot of the, uh, the actual when it comes to satanic things. Why do you guys think music is such an important component? Because it can actually create the atmosphere and the experience for you. Whereas if you take the music away, immediately the effect will be different. Okay? Now let's get a little bit, in, now that we kind of understand that, let's get a little bit into how music affects the body, okay? All right. Is everyone clear in regards to the Holy Spirit never reveals itself in a bedlam of noise? Are there any questions? Guys, we, we can take questions. If you feel that we're not being clear enough, you're just going through the principles. Bedlam? Bedlam is something chaotic. It's something that ha is, is pretty much chaos. There's so much noise and all these different things are going on. One of my synonyms is actually chaos for that. Okay? Um, the other thing, what we were going into was the actual science behind it. Okay. We're going to get into some interaction here now. What organ in the brain is above the hypothalamus? None? The thalamus. 
Mm -hmm. The thalamus. That's why it's called hypothalamus because it's underneath thalamus. Okay? Who knows what the thalamus is? Does anybody know what the thalamus is? Okay. It's a sensory organ. And when I'm talking sensory organ, I mean anything that has to do with your senses. Okay? Let's get down to music. Here's what I was talking to my friend Vanessa about. Sarah is walking into the church. As soon as Sarah walks into the church and the music hits her eardrum and goes to be processed in the brain, check this. St stay on that thought for me. Stay on, keep that thought, okay? As soon as Sarah comes in and the music hits her ears, okay? Imagine that there's a building and that every time that you have to enter the building, there is a security guard there in the building, right? Monitoring the building, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Let's call that security guard the frontal lobe. What is the name of the security guard? Okay, what is the name of the security guard? Okay, did you guys know that the frontal lobe is where most of your decisions and your judgments are actually made? So actually when you follow the health message, clearing the mind, all those things, actually has to do with the frontal lobe, which is quite amazing. Okay, so here's what happens. Security guard is the frontal lobe. Security guard is constantly monitoring. The Holy Spirit is constantly communicating. Nicole, don't do that. Nicole, stop there. Don't cross the street. Don't leave this for your children. Don't do, okay? He's constantly speaking through you, okay? Speaking to you. Now there's the bad guy, which is what I'm gonna call the robber. Now this is not particularly technical, but let's call this guy the robber, okay? Your hypothalamus is actually the center where most of the temptations many times. You guys remember when the Bible talks about the carnal nature? Okay, the reason why it's called your carnal nature is because we are all actually sinful, right? until we come to Jesus and we are converted and he gives us a new mind. So what the hypothalamus is, is actually the center for all those things like illicit sex, drugs, alcohol. Many of these bad things are actually controlled by your hypothalamus, okay? And above it is the thalamus. So whenever you feel that you are, let's say, sexually attracted to someone that you know you shouldn't be. Let's say you're married, you have a wife, you're sexually attracted, the devil's tempting you and he's actually doing it through your hypothalamus, okay? Do you guys get that? Okay, so that's your center. I, many times what Dr. Baldwin calls it, he calls it the center for sin, okay? And the frontal lobe, when it gains control over the mind, instead of using the emotions, it uses the will. Remember Steps of Christ when it talks about the power of the will? She says, what you need to understand is the power of the will. Okay, let's go back to the security guard. As soon as something wants to enter the building, the security guard says, stop right there. I need to examine you. I need to watch you. I need to see what you have on you before you enter into the brain, okay? especially when it comes to spiritual issues, okay? Now the thalamus back here will be chilling until further, until called to further notice by the frontal lobe, whether or not he wants to feel the certain things because it's a sensory organ, okay? But you see what happens with music, it totally bypasses the security guard. Did you guys hear that? It totally bypasses that security guard. It goes directly to your thalamus, okay? As soon as the sound enters, it goes directly to the thalamus, and that's why you see many times immediately as soon as the song goes on, even if you have been converted before, even if you have a spiritual relationship with God, you still feel, many people still feel like they want to move because it's a physical thing. Many people still feel like tapping their foot because it hasn't even been processed through the frontal lobe. So as you guys see, the music, the type of music we choose to listen to many times is going to indicate what our actions are going to be regardless of whether we choose to or not. 
Let's try that again. The type of music that we listen to will many times indicate what we will do regardless of whether we will choose to do that or not. You go out there, music, the language of music is powerful. In fact, I remember my friends and I, music was so important to us that we would actually stay up and listen to music all night and pretty much just talk about music all night. Music was so important to us, there was no music, no friends. No music, no party. No music, no alcohol. No music, you don't, you don't have anything. Because your music is the atmosphere. Your music is what, is what gives you the desire to do all these crazy things. And whenever we were bored, put, put the music on. Whenever you were lonely, put the music on. Why? Because that music that is of the enemy will cripple the power of the will and the carnal nature takes control. Isn't Satan's plan absolutely powerful and amazing, isn't it? To try to deceive our youth and deceive them? Isn't that quite genius to think that? But praise the Lord, he has given us power by God's grace to choose whether or not to listen to what type of music that we want to listen to. Amen? Was it clear so far? Okay, the security guard is the frontal lobe, your thalamus, and by the way, did you guys know that the ear actually has more nerve connections than any other organ in your body? So it affects absolutely everything. Every organ in your body is, is affected by music. So the other day, when we went to the other church, the beat actually got so strong that I could actually feel myself, um, you guys know what tachycardia is, right? Fast heart. I actually started feeling kind of out of breath. And, and I'm, I'm past that music now, so I was just sitting there. But it was really that bad that I could actually feel my heart pumping extra hard. And I was like, man, how did it get to that point, you know? And the Lord was like, oh, trust me, this stuff is powerful. And one of the things we're going to look into, guys, is syncopation. How many of you guys have heard of syncopation before? Syncopated rhythm? Have you guys heard of that? Raise your hand if you've heard about it. Okay, perfect. Syncopated rhythm is going to be quite an awesome part that we're going to look into. So is everything clear so far in terms of the language of music and the physical body and then what God intends mu to music to be and what it should not be? Is that clear? Perfect. Okay. Let's proceed then. Just a little bit about, and guys, this is, this is so serious. This is like, had you guys ever heard that in Ellen G. White's time, there was an actual r revival in terms of worldly music coming into the church? Did you guys know that she actually said something about it? You knew that? She actually, there was actually an incident in Indiana and Ellen G. White gave a comment on this incident, and she told what would happen in the future. Let us read it for you. Let us read it. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 36. The same quote that we were talking about in regards to the bedlam of noise, okay? She wrote, okay? The things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has shown me would take place just before the close of probation. Ooh. Every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. There will be shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The senses of rational beings, listen to this now, will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Spirit. That was very specific. I don't know about you guys. That was so specific, it shocked me the first time I read it. In fact, what comes to my mind is what? What comes to your mind when you hear the description she's talking about? Shouting with drums, music, and dancing. The mainstream divine service, right? Isn't that what comes to your mind? Let me ask you something. When did she say this would take place? just before the close of probation, every uncouth thing will be demonstrated. 